Justice Belo Kao of a High Court in Abuja has declared as illegal, unlawful, null and void the continued detention of the suspended governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Mr. Godwin Emirfili, by the Department of State Services, the DSS. Also, on the program today, we'll be looking at uh, the allegation uh, against that the Independent Petroleum Marketers Association of Nigeria has been extorting in the, uh, the Tanker Drivers Association of Nigeria, and they also have called on uh, their members to disregard the strike action that was to be instituted by the Tanker Drivers, and they have denied that there has been no extortion whatsoever. We'll be taking a look at some of the front pages of our national dailies this morning to find out which headlines made it to their front pages. We'll be having our analyst Opunabo Ontaria who will be joining us from River State to analyze, dissect this headlines. Good morning and welcome to Mindset Monday of the Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. I am Maureen Menongwe Zigwe. And I am Nyamgul Agadi. It's such a pleasure having you join us today. We do hope that you had a wonderful weekend and you've risen and you're shining right now. Traffic may be crazy, but you have to do what you have to do. Yeah, and straight to our first up trending. Senators and reps set to spend 40 billion naira on SUVs. The Senate and House of Representatives will soon expand uh, over 40 billion naira to purchase vehicles for lawmakers in the red and green chambers of the National Assembly. No fewer than 107 units of the 2023 model of the Toyota Land Cruiser, I'm laying emphasis on the model, mm. and 358 units of the 2023 model of Toyota Prado will be per purchased for the use of members of the Senate and the House of Representatives, respectively. The planned purchase is different from the official vehicles expected to be purchased for the four presiding officers of the National Assembly, namely the President of the Senate, Gustu Lakbabio, Speaker of the House of Representatives, Tajuddin Abbas, Deputy President of the Senate, Jubrin Barao, Barao, the Deputy Speaker of the House of Representatives, Benjamin Kalu. The Senate Committee on Services, saddled with the responsibility of purchasing vehicles for lawmakers, will handle the negotiations and take delivery of them. Well, Senate President Kwabio had during the week constituted the Committee on Senate Services, headed by Kogi West Senator Sunday Karimi. Though the committee is expected to work with the management of the National Assembly, the purchase is the sole responsibility of the Senate. Um, well, it's just like when you go to a, a brother and you say you're very, very hungry and the brother tells you, God bless you. Mm. <laughs> and then he's eating a chicken, he's eating all the sumptuous mm. meals that you can think of in this world. Uh, the Senate, wh when we were talking about all the press that is going to come up later anyway, mm -hmm. I saw a cartoon on Business Day and it was really, really uh, educating uh, everybody because we saw the Senate president and other members of the Senate with guns saying that they're going to fight corruption. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, there's a 70 billion naira, uh, uh, well, I call it loot, no, uh, baggage or, or bag behind them and all that. It's really crazy. I don't know if um, they just deliberately want a revolution that should be avoided or not. The ordinary man, 12 million people in Nigeria out of the 120 million mm. will be given 8,000 a month for six months. And the Senate is taking at least 10 million per month as palliative. It's, it's crazy. And then now you're buying new vehicles. My, my problem with that is not that they don't need vehicles. But if at least all that money was going to be spent on local production of these cars, it would have empowered a lot of Nigerians who would be working there and the company that is there and encourage other people to do business in Nigeria and 
produce in Nigeria because we want to move from uh, consumption to production. But none of this was done. The latest model is what they're looking for with big amounts of money while Nigerians are asked to tighten their belts. I think it's just You know, crazy. the Vanguard newspaper aptly captured this 8,000 Naira thing yesterday as an insult to Nigerians. They want us to sponsor their lavish lifestyles. They want us to help them recoup what they spent during the elections overnight. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you are here for governance, then you should be seen to be governing the people and doing what you should be doing. Well, what do they need the vehicles for? Do they need that to uh, pass the necessary laws? Do they need that vehicles. to, exactly. And that, that's, that's, okay, Buhari might have his problems, a lot of problems, yes. Some of them may have passed under the bridge without his knowing it, yes. But I saw a video of this man strolling in his village with just two people going behind him. That is someone who is confident that nothing will happen to him in his village because of how he relates with his people. Why can't our senators have that kind of confidence when they go to their constituencies? They want to have bulletproof cars. Exactly why I'm know, asking, yeah. what do they need them for? Do they need those vehicles on the floor to be able to reason well and make the necessary laws or pass the necessary... Because I tell you something. We are dealing with an economy that's on its knees. Mm -hmm. And so you have people out there who are supposedly supposed to make sure that things work out well so that we get this economy off its knees, mm -hmm. working and running. And they are living in such opulence in the face of brazen poverty. Yes. Many yes. Nigerians yes. have been pushed down. Those who were in the middle, you know. Do we have a middle class the anymore? Middle, just, well, the some classes people were, are politicians and people. Thank you. That's all. So we don't have a middle class. Millions of Nigerians have now been moved into the poverty level. Millions of them. Out of that million, they are taking care of or claim they want to take care of 12 million and giving them 8,000 a month, which is now up to 50,000 Naira in six months because they are saying 8,000 for six months, which is not up to 50,000. Six months, you're giving them that. First of all, after the six months, what happens? And then second, what can anyone do with 8,000 in the current Nigeria that we are today? Who amongst them uh, uh, recharges his phone for 8,000 in two days? Mm -hmm. Among them that are making the laws and uh, saying what they're, they're saying. Uh, I still refer to this uh, ex Abia state governor who said he was going to give 500 naira to people who gave birth in, in government clinics yeah. and said, do you know what 500 naira means to the poor person? And is that not insult enough? You know already that this person will be thanking you for just 500 naira that you, you cannot even use. We're dealing with people who do oh, not okay. have conscience, if you ask me. We're dealing with people who are utterly insensitive to, to the plight of the people that they claim to represent. Mm -hmm. We're dealing with people who don't seem to have a clue of why they are in office. You're there to make things better for the people. And if you're asking the masses to tighten their belt, you should lead by leadership. You should lead by example. You should be seen to be making the sacrifice. It becomes then easy for the masses to follow you and say, okay, we're in this together. But with the way they are going, it shows that we're not in this together. They are on their own level. We are on our own level. And so a revolution may take place. We hope it, 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 you know, they don't push the people to that point. But with the way things are going... And this is not us just trying to say um, this has to happen, a revolution has to happen. Nobody wants it. We, cannot, we may not even be able to survive another NSAS as it is. We may need so, a revolution. So Nobody is calling for violence. Yeah, revolution so are, must not necessarily begging, take the form of violence. We are begging those who, who are concerned that even if you want us to suffer, you don't have to throw it in our faces this way. Nigerians are suffering. Like one of our guests said, uh, Mr. Shegun Shokwaton, he said, um, the only palliatives Nigerians need is a return of the subsidy that has been removed. Because every government in the world has some kind of subsidy. And you've removed government. it. Now you know a particular amount that you can pay. And you are asking for money. Some, some of this money may even be more than what can 
pay for subsidy now that we know the data, we have the data of the actual consumption of uh, fuel in Nigeria. And you're asking Nigerians that, okay, it's going to be better. Better for who? So if palliatives have to come, everybody should have a, an equal measure or nothing at all. And to think that we're borrowing to do this thing. Yeah. We're borrowing money for this. Yeah. Borrowing even from money that was supposed to be spent on the people who some of them lost lives, some of them lost, lost property, some of them houses, farmlands, and all that. They budgeted money. Now they want to collect from that money. And then inside that same money, so if you have lost your roof like last year, they're collecting that money. What will be left for you to, to go and do your roof or to, to feed your family because you lost your uh, farmland or something and all that? You, that's misappropriation by definition. You're we we, we just do not need... Be, we do you, not need... I don't know. We do not need things to go on the way they've been. We were hoping for a change. We were hoping for mm. things to, 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 to be different. You understand? Not business as usual. That's what we're hoping. Was this what uh, was this... meant when they said uh, we're going to continue from where our predecessors stopped? Oh, well, let's go to the second next top trending. <laughs> Maybe this frustration is what led to the next thing that we're looking at right now. A policeman... A pol police have arrested uh, a woman over alleged beating of 75-year-old mother. The police in Anambra have arrested one Ukamaka Udubo from uh, Abagana, Njikoka, local government area of the state, for allegedly beating her 75-year-old mother under her care. The divisional police officer of Abagana police station, SP Fanyume, confirmed the arrest when an NGO 50-50 action group of the Women Aid Collective visited him on the incident. Ume said that the police station was informed about how the suspect had been physically assaulting her septuagenarian mother and immediate action was initiated which led to the arrest of the accused and declared that the case would be transferred to the police command in Oka after investigation and documentation. Uh, Mrs. Nkiru Okwata, the President General Women Wing of the Abagana community said that her attention was drawn by a community member to a video trending on social media on Friday which showed that the action happened in her community and Nwokoka has been living in her daughter's home where she was being taken care of. The victim's son, Mr. Emeka Nwokoka, uh, expressed shock at his sister's behavior saying that their mother had been staying with the sister for a long time and he said that his sister was remorseful since the incident broke out to public attention and described the act as confusing. The chairperson of the kindred where Udubo hails from, however, Mrs. Yuniz Anago assured the group that they would take care of the victim who is receiving treatment at the hospital. Your mother, mm. and you're assaulting the mother. But like the brother said, she's been living with uh, this um, daughter for a long time and this thing just happened and it's confusing. Who knows what may have triggered this? Nothing has triggered it. The woman has been going through that for ages, for as long as she's been living with her. Nyango, I saw the video on Saturday. I couldn't watch it completely. I didn't even know it was the mother. I saw the video of a naked, very weak old woman on the floor being beaten, poured water on, and, and I thought, what could this old person has done? I mean, no matter what, uh, you know? And then on Sunday, I saw the, the update that it was indeed the woman's daughter that was doing that to her. Mm. My, my confusion is the confusion of the brother now, because the brother, having said that this, their mother was living with the sister for a long time and that he's confused about this, I don't even, I don't even know how to put it. That means, first of all, she's not an only child. And she's the one that the mother has been staying with. And the brothers and sisters or whoever the relations might be have never either noticed or said anything about this. Or have so not been it, going to visit. So and so you wonder really what values. Yeah. It, 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 it raises a lot of questions about the values that these children have, the children of this particular woman. And... Also, I'm concerned about those because it was in an open space when mm -hmm. you see the video. Um, f thank God for the person who eventually filmed it and made it go viral. But again, it also tells me that this thing has been going on and people have been seeing it and didn't raise the alarm early enough. You begin to ask, when did we start getting comfortable with this kind of inhuman treatment um, being meted to our neighbors? First, you have this horrible daughter doing this to her mother. Mm -hmm. As a people, our culture 
teaches us to be kind to elderly people, whether mm -hmm. your mother or not. Mm -hmm. I mean, growing up, we saw us. If you're walking down the road, you see an elderly woman, you must greet very well. And even and that then elder had the, the authority, the right to discipline you when your mother or father exactly. is not there, if you do something wrong. Yeah. That's how we grew up. I don't know how. I don't know uh, how, how Nigerians have become this. But also, uh, thank God today is Monday, and we most times talk about our health issues, especially mental health. And this goes to, to also um, beg the question, how much do we pay attention to our mental health? Because a daughter assaulting the mother cannot be an ordinary thing. There must be something, a mental problem that needs to be addressed. It may not be like you, you are naked, you are going to sleep in the marketplace and all that, but mental problems are real, and we take it for granted in Nigeria. I do not think it's, this woman's case is a mental problem, Nyango. It's still mental. <laughs> okay, <laughs> it's still well, mental, whatever. However you want yeah, to Because it's it. not in Nigerians to behave like this. And the annoying part is that she's been identified as a leader in the community and in the church. Yes, if you read the story, <laughs> the update. I yes, didn't want to go she's that a way. leader in the community and a leader in the church. She has a mental problem. Thank God that the NGO took this up when the video went viral, and the state, the first lady of the state, also took the necessary steps to rescue the woman and give her medical attention, as we saw in that uh, picture there that was being played while we're reading the the while uh, the trending. So it, it is quite unfortunate. Nigerians are not known to be like this. Exactly We're not why known I to be like this. Mental problem. Because as a true Nigerian, you don't do that to a mother. But also, another thing comes up. Um, maybe it's high time we started looking at possibility of having uh, old people's homes run by government, run by individuals and all that, as they do somewhere else. Sometimes these old women need professional care. It doesn't matter whether you have children or not. Some of these children may be too busy. Some of them may be having some other influences or may have mental problems, like I'm saying this one may have, uh, and so on. So maybe we should start looking at that as well so that they will have professional care in the, the 11 you hours know, of You know, ironically, life. people from Nigeria and indeed Africa had charted or mocked people from the West from for having that in mm, place mm. because they prided themselves as people who took care of their parents, their aged parents, as against taking them off to some uh, elderly people's homes and just leaving them in the care of nurses. But now you're saying that may be the just may way be to it. go. So yeah. it is very sad. It's very unfortunate. It, indeed. It's, it's sadder because um, family life is no longer what it used to be. We don't we don't value family life the way we used to value in those days. And in those days that people valued family life, you, you dare not. <laughs> in fact, you dare not. You dare it should not. be a privilege for your mother to yes. even stay with you. Yes. You dare not do what... The community will come after you. And like you said, the video and everything that we read about the story shows that this is not the first time. And there are people who have seen it, but maybe just said, okay, it doesn't concern me. For, on the one hand, or or they didn't even know what to do, or they were just comfortable. No, we must we must go. You know, we have to be our brother's keeper. And even the person who recorded it, mm -hmm. did the person record it to send to the NGO, or the NGO just happened to see that video? So if the person just recorded it for content, mm. that also is a problem. Because if you record something like that, you should be able to use it, report it to the relevant say authorities. Say something, say something. Say something. Because if you do not say something, uh, you become an enabler. You just... You become an enabler and almost complicit in whatever it is that's going on. So you must say something when you see something. We must go back to being a brother's keepers. Uh, even though these days what appears to be uh, topmost on the minds of people is content, you know, mm. uh, being the first to upload this yeah. or getting clicks and likes and all of that. But we must... I mean, why would I upload somebody's mother naked <laughs> just because of... Because even should, if we have that video, we, can't, we couldn't have used it. It's, it's, it Explicit content. Sense. It's it totally, totally it a very really gory sense. sight to see. Well, it is the Mindset Edition of The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. We'll take a break right now and come back to let you know what headlines made it to the front pages of some national dailies. Stay with us.